We will now proceed with the division on Amendment 19. Members should cast their votes now. Before I close the vote, I call CoCab Stewart to cast a proxy vote on behalf of Stuart McMillan. McMillan, I vote no. Thank you. Um, and I will not repeat that every single time uh, during the afternoon, but I will just, just call Ms Stewart. Um, the vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 19 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 24, no 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We move to group two, field sports. I call amendment 20 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. And I point out that if amendment 64 is agreed to, I cannot call amendment 65, as there's a preemption. Rachel Hamilton to move Amendment 20 and speak to all amendments in the group. Presiding Officer, Amendments 20 and 21 and their subsequent amendments in my name seek to allow for an exception for rough shooting in field trials. Throughout the entire passage of this bill, we have heard a strong and sustained case for these two activities to be exempt from the two-dog limit in light of the inclusion of rabbit in the bill. At the heart of these exceptions, is the right for people to continue lawful and legitimate activities which effectively manage wildlife and ensure that pests are controlled in a humane manner. And I don't use pests in the lightest sense in this description. There has been a lack of evidence throughout this process to show that using two or more dogs during a rough shoot has any impact on animal welfare of rabbits or foxes. We know that gun dogs do not operate in packs, and that argument has been made many times throughout the passage of the bill, nor do they chase wild mammals. The entire process of flushing and humanely dispatching wild mammals is done effectively, efficiently, and with the highest regard for the highest animal welfare standards. These amendments reflect the Minister's wordings from Rain Committee correspondence. Simply put, if an exception is not accepted, rough shooters find themselves falling foul of the bill, which ultimately creates a grey area around rough shooting. Whether it's the implementation of the ethical principles in wildlife management, a possible snaring ban, the limiting of hunting and rough shooting to two dogs, I believe that this is an important argument to be making, and we should be looking at this from an evidence-based approach to wildlife management. My amendments in this section in particular do offer a way around this that could help strike that right balance within the bill. Amendments 63, 65 and 66 in my name remove reference to sports in section 6 of the bill. Reference to sport in this section of the bill completely and deliberately misunderstands the nature of hunting. It reinforces the impression that activities and land management activities such as deer stalking or game shooting are only about sport. However, we know that these activities play a vital role in the harvesting of food, pest control, wildlife management in general. That evidence was set out as clear as day to the RAIN Committee by stakeholders such as the NFUS, BASC and the SCA and SLE. Yet the Scottish Government have chosen, in my opinion, to all along listen but ultimately ignore the evidence. 
The argument advanced 20 years ago by those opponents of hunting was that they had no problem with dogs being used for pest control, using a pack to flush to guns, but wanted to end what they called hunting, in brackets, for sport. It is unhelpful, unnecessary and misleading to reduce these activities to the single purpose of sport, when in reality they are undertaken for a variety of purposes. Moreover, those purposes are essential to Scotland's food security and biodiversity. Colin Smith's amendments in these groups which seek to remove any exceptions for falconry would treat falconry solely as a sport, a notion for which the reasons I have set out above should be removed from the bill. As my colleague Edward Mountain said at stage two, you need to look no further than the roofs of the chamber in which we sit, where falcons are used to keep pigeons out of gutters, for an example of the use of falcons not relating to sport. Whilst this does not involve mammals, there are examples of where falcons are used to control predators, having been searched for or flushed from cover by dogs. And, presiding officer, I would just like to make the point um, I tried to intervene on Ariane Burgess to ultimately help my colleague in making uh, perhaps a bending, bending the truth uh, on one of her statements in the previous uh, grouping, because one of the primary uh, drivers of population decline of capercaillie, um, amongst other ground nesting birds, is predation by foxes. And that is stated by Nature Scott on the website. So I'd like to give um, Ariane Burgess the opportunity to correct um, her, her statement for the record on that point. Uh, thank you, um, presiding officer. And I move the amendments in my name. Thank you. Colin Smith to speak to amendment 60 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, President Officer. Amendment 60 and 64 in my name would remove providing quarry for falconry as a permitted use of dogs. Falconry creates welfare concerns for both the bird of prey and the animal being hunted. The Rain Committee questioned the inclusion of falconry in its Stage 1 report, commenting that they required more information as to, and I quote, why an exception for falconry has been included in the scope of the bill, and also raised concerns about Section 62E, which requires that, and I quote again, the wild mammal which has been searched for, stalked, or flushed, is shot dead, or killed by a bird of prey. When I brought an amendment forward at Stage 2, the Minister said she could not support it because it would ban an otherwise lawful activity by the back door, because there has been no consultation on any proposal to ban falconers from hunting, and that does not fall within the, what is intended by the Bill. However, the issue was widely discussed and evidence was received during Stage 1 of the Bill by the Committee, otherwise it would not have featured in their report, arguing that there should be no action against something which is clearly cruel because you did not include it in the first draft of the Bill is not a strong argument. I would also remind the Minister that during the passage of the Animals and Wildlife Penalties Protections and Power Scotland Act 2020, the Government introduced amendments at Stage 2 to ban the shooting of seals and subsequently supported an amendment at Stage 3 to protect mountain hares. Both of these amendments were welcome, but neither of them had been subject to consultation by the Scottish Government at the time the Bill was passed. They were the right thing to do. The Government have completely failed to answer the basic question of how flushing a wild mammal to be killed by a waiting bird of prey can be considered less cruel than it being killed by a dog. Amendments 20, 26, 29, 32 and 67 in the name of Rachel Hamilton would, allow, would add a new exception for rough shooting and 21, 27, 30, 33 and 68 would create a new exception for gun dog field trials. Neither of these have a, a two-dog limit as long as the intention is not to use the dogs as a pack, which is inconsistent with the rest of the bill uh, and risks the creation of loopholes. However, I do believe there is a legitimate concern that the bill does lack some clarity in relation to rough shooting. I believe there is a need for far more explicit guidance on this matter. I note the Government have now amended the explanatory notes on the bill, and it states that under this exception, several people could use one or two dogs to flush separate wild mammals as quarry for shooting, providing they did not allow the dogs to join together with other groups of one or two dogs and, for example, flush out the same quarry. There are clearly practical challenges over how you enforce such measures when there will be more than two dogs present. I hope the Minister will say more about this in her comments, both for the benefit of those who do carry out rough shooting, but also those who are concerned that a loophole could be emerging. I therefore urge members to support the amendments to remove falconry from the exceptions included in the Bill, and I will listen carefully to what the Minister does have to say regarding rough shooting. Thank you. And I call Ariane Burgess. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to speak in support of Colin Smith's Amendments 60 and 64. 
These would remove the exception for the use of up to two dogs in falconry for sport. Yes, falconry is, is legal in Scotland, but this doesn't justify the use of dogs in falconry. This bill seeks to constrain the situations in which dogs can be used to hunt, with, hunt wild mammals. If the hunting must occur, then the use of dogs should be a last resort. So why should there be an exception from this offence for sport of all purposes? Further, we can't allow this exception to be another loophole for fox hunts, like in England, where hunts have been known to carry birds of prey as a token presence to circumvent the two-dog limit there. I urge members to consider every exception from this point of view. Could this be used as a loophole? Thank you. I call the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, firstly, amendments uh, 20, 26, 29, 32 and 67 in the name of Rachel Hamilton um, regarding rough shooting, something that has been discussed at length throughout the bill process uh, and I have listened very carefully. I have listened carefully today. I listened uh, throughout the additional scrutiny sections uh, specifically dedicated to rough shooting that the committee organised and I listened to all of the contributions made there. Um, I have heard a lot of evidence, uh, particular about the behaviours of dogs that are involved in rough shooting. Of course, these are gun dogs, uh, and it includes that they will not chase, they will not kill uh, wild mammals, they will not form packs, and they will always be under strict control. Uh, but this all very much is what the bill will require of them, and so it actually gives me confidence that they will be able to comply in the aftermath of the passage of the bill, should it be supported today. And of course, the bill as drafted does allow for most permutations of rough shooting to continue, but that within the new rules. And I think that uh, while some may need to adapt behaviours, usually making a minimal change, a minimal change is justified for the sake of consistency and when it's set against the risk of creating a new loophole where people would be able to take as many dogs as they might like, uh, say they were rough shooting, when in fact they were illegally hunting. And this could, I think, besmirch the actual and legitimate activity of uh, rough shooting. Equally, I could not justify creating an exemption for regulation of rough shooters, which, although not an unimportant activity, is largely recreational, when, for example, on the other hand, I would be asking farmers to comply with a very strict two-dog limit uh, in the need, uh, when they're protecting their livestock or when environmental managers are seeking to control invasive non-native species. It is a strength of the bill that we regulate all who would purport to use dogs in the course of hunting in the countryside. Um, and of course, as I've already said, there's the risk of um, having an unlimited number of dogs creating a smokescreen. And for those reasons, uh, just as I couldn't at stage two, I can't support amendments which would create an exception. However, if the bill is passed, I've already committed that I will work with the sector to develop guidance on rough shooting so that they, so that the public, so that everyone can um, have an understanding of what to expect in the countryside following the passage of the bill. And I think that that will um, raise to, rise to some of what Colin Smith was asking for. And my comments on Rachel Hamilton's amendments 21, 27, 30, 33 and 68 are, are similar. I don't think that an exception for field trials is, is necessary or justified. I have spoken um, very recently indeed to stakeholders such as the, the Kennel Club to discuss the implications of this bill on field trials. These discussions have led me to conclude that the bill as drafted does not prevent field trials from taking place. And I know that that's something that the Kennel Club acknowledged. Um, and therefore, I won't be supporting this amendment either. Moving to Colin Smith's uh, amendments to remove falconry from section six. Um, my comments here are much the same as they were at stage two. Falconry is a permitted activity in Scotland. And as long as it's done in accordance with all relevant legislation, for example, the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, that remains the case. Um, I know that in falconry dogs are sometimes used to flush wild mammals into the open where they can be taken by birds of prey and it's therefore right that they come within the scope of this bill and be regulated as other uses of dogs would be in the course of hunting. 
but Colin Smith's amendments would remove the ability of a person to use dogs altogether. Now, I understand why some people do not agree with hunting mammals for recreational purposes, uh, but as things stand, falconry is a lawful form of hunting, and as long as dogs are used in accordance with the requirements of this bill, it is not justifiable to single it out here. And for those reasons, I can't support it. And quickly moving on, presiding officer, uh, to Rachel Hamilton's amendment 63, 65 and 66. These would remove the, the reference to sport from the definitions of game shooting. Um, I'm conscious that there are many motivations uh, to undertake these activities. And during uh, the discussion of Edward Mountain's very similar amendments on this topic at stage two, I explained that where, for example, activities such as deer stalking are being done to protect trees, then these would fall under Section 7, or where it's done to prevent serious damage to crops, it would be under Section 3. The term sport has been included here to distinguish between recreational pursuits uh, and wildlife management or indeed environmental purposes. And it will be up to uh, the individual to determine which of the exceptions in the bill their activity uh, falls under. So I, I continue to believe that the term sport is helpful in the context, and I don't support the amendment uh, for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. And I call on Rachel Hamilton to wind up and press or withdraw Amendment 20. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, firstly, Presiding Officer, I am concerned about um, some of the comments that were made during the passage of the Bill, uh, particularly uh, and the, the individuals that will not be supporting my amendments today, because I do believe um, that rough shooting has not been able to uh, be defined and that we have struggled, or the government have struggled, to explain uh, what a rough shoot is. I also believe that within the context of this bill that rough shooting uh, was overlooked and only considered as we approached um, the end of uh, stage two and when we had to bring together a round table in the committee to hear from stakeholders who were concerned uh, that rough shooting would be uh, captured uh, by this bill. Um, I also don't agree um, with a number of comments in the chamber today that rough shooting could be used as a cover for any activity. Um, for those who know how rough shooting works, there's a difference between uh, dogs used uh, in different activities. So, for example, we heard uh, during evidence uh, from the Scottish Gamekeepers Association that there is a difference between a lurcher or a spaniel or a hound and that a working dog is under control. The minister agreed herself that she was confident that individuals uh, were able to control working dogs uh, who were trained to command. Um, I do welcome the minister's commitment to produce guidance, which was something that we very much came to a conclusion on uh, during uh, the passage of uh, stage two during the committee. So that is welcome. But in conclusion, presiding officer. Yes, of course. Thank you uh, for, for taking the intervention. Would, would uh, Rachel Hamilton agree with me that rough shooting and gun dog field trials are an important social cohesion and the very fabric of rural right, life, and that they contribute towards a rural economy worth tens of millions of pounds to remote areas, bringing employment throughout the Scottish countryside? Protecting and promoting these activities is imperative if we are to preserve and protect the rural way of life. Does she agree with me that uh, Labour, the Greens, have little or no understanding, and along with the, the, the Scottish Government and the Minister and our civil servants who admitted their knowledge of rush shooting was gained by watching YouTube videos, absolutely miss the importance of uh, uh, hunting and, and uh, rough shooting to rural economy. And, and some of these amendments that they brought forward have been ill thought out, including the inclusion of rabbits in the legislation, without any valid or substantiated animal welfare concerns being heard. Rachel Hamilton. I, I thank my colleague Finlay Carson for uh, his intervention. And of course, uh, I mean, I agree, many of us in the chamber represent uh, rural constituency. Colin Smith from Labour represents uh, a very rural constituency. I represent a very rural constituency. Mary McCallum represents a rural constituency. We all um, have individuals in our constituencies who are uh, reliant on the jobs uh, that are created by um, these particular uh, activities, particularly gamekeepers and others. And I agree as well that there has been a lack of evidence 
to take into account those aspects as we've, as we've gone through um, the committee stages. Um, but just in conclusion, presiding officer, uh, I won't be supporting uh, Colin Smith's amendments in this group, but I urge others to support mine. Thank you. I move the Press, thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 20 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division. And members should cast their votes now. I call Cocab Stewart. I vote no on behalf of Stuart McMillan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. And the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 20 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 90. There were no abstentions. That amendment is therefore not uh, agreed. I call amendment 21 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that amendment 21 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. There will be a vote and members should cast their votes now. And I call Cocab Stewart. On behalf of Stuart McMillan, I vote no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that that is uh, recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result, the result of the vote on amendment number 21 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 27, no 88. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not uh, agreed. We move to group three, definition of a wild mammal. Before uh, I call the first amendment, just a plea to those wishing to speak um, uh, during the debate, not simply through a, a, an intervention. If they could press the request to be, speak buttons either as soon as possible and certainly before the final speaker gets to the feet, that would be very helpful. Uh, and with that, I call amendment 22 in the name of Edward Mountain, uh, grouped with amendments 23 and 24. Mr Mountain. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I rise to speak to the two amendments in my name. One is to remove mink from the bill, and the other is to remove rabbits from the bill. Now, I want to talk, first of all, about mink and remind members, before I do, when I talk about both of these species and about controlling them, I have no intention ever in my life to increase suffering when you are uh, uh, dealing with a predator or an animal that, that needs to be removed. So it must be done in a humane way. 
And let's look at mink. Mink is a non-native invasive species. For those that don't remember, it was introduced for in mink farming. And when mink farming no longer became viable, it was released into our environment, into the native, pristine environment of Scotland. As such, it is a danger to our flora and fauna. It is an aggressive animal. And for those of who have seen it working and, and operating on the uh, banks of a stream or a river or a burn, you'll see it destroys, destroys birds and voles. Birds it could destroy include ducks and ground nesting birds, which are really important, like oyster catchers, sandpipers and red shanks. And we need to protect those birds. And should it ever get into a domestic environment, it will certainly kill every chicken in a pen, just as simply as that. It is accepted across Scotland that mink are not something we should be welcoming. And I should remind people that it, the Kengorms National Park Authority had a mink eradication scheme where it encouraged landowners across Scot uh, the National Park to destroy mink. It provided uh, mink rafts and in some cases traps to allow them to do that. That project was supported by Scottish Natural Heritage at the time and I believe is still in place. The danger of not controlling non-native invasive species, the presiding officer will know, was demonstrated in Orkney when Stoats got in there in 2010. It is unacceptable that we allow that to happen in those environments, and sadly there is no way of Stoats being able to be eradicated. So why, oh why, is this parliament considering making mink more difficult to eradicate when it is, is destroying our own native flora and fauna. I also now want to talk about rabbits. I have a real problem with rabbits being included in the bill because I listened to the Cabinet Secretary speak uh, at the amendment stage at stage, stage two. And there were a couple of reasons why she said that rabbits should be included in the bill. The first one was that they could be used as a cover for hair coursing. Absolutely not. Rabbits and hares are significantly different. And those people who live and work in the countryside know that they are different, can identify them, and those people who seek to use them as cover for an illegal activity should really have the book thrown at them. But they don't need further protection. The other reason that the Cabinet Secretary said they needed uh, further protection is she felt they felt the same pain as foxes. Yet in the same breath, in the very same bill, she is protecting rats. Or she is not protecting rats. She's not protecting rats, Cabinet Secretary, because you don't feel that they're as good as rabbits or foxes. So my problem is that if most of our uh, constituents saw a wild rabbit come into their house, they would probably usher it out. If they saw a rat come into their house, they'd be straight on to the local council demanding that it would be killed and a rodent control officer was sent round. So they are the same. Yes, I will take it. Rachel Hamilton. Presiding officer, on that particular point, I, I wondered if the member had uh, heard any evidence uh, to suggest um, that, that a, when a, when a, why a dog can be used to kill a rat under the bill but not a rabbit is better in welfare terms. I, I, I've, heard, I've heard no evidence that there is any difference, but it is difference because rats aren't cuddly. And when it comes to rabbits, they are a real issue when it comes to land management. Cabinet Secretary, I'm sure I don't need to remind you of the expression breeding like rabbits. One doe rabbit can produce 100 kits a year, and if you multiply that up during the course of the year, that's a huge amount of rabbits. On one particular area of land in Scotland that I managed, which was a triple SI for mild grassland and for Scottish pine woods, we had to resort to killing over 10,000 rabbits a year for four years to allow that habitat to recover. We needed all the tools that we had available to us, the legal ones, to control those rabbits. Some of the things that we engaged in was, was shooting, um, uh, shooting the rabbits and long nets, which I've mentioned to the Cabinet Secretary before, where you need dogs to flush rabbits into nets when they're out away from their holes, and then for you to cull them. So flushing from cover and taking these rabbits on is particularly important. Now, the Cabinet Secretary also said that she was concerned that 
people would use the cover that they were flushing uh, rabbits when they were hunting for hares, which I find an odd uh, contribution from the Cabinet Secretary, because I'm sure she knows that hares and rabbits live in very different habitats. Hares mainly in open fields, rabbits in close uh, vegetation, so they can go from one hole to the other and can seek the protection. So they cannot really be confused. So I would also mention to the, to the Parliament how important it is that we are not squeamish about dealing with uh, animals that need to be removed from our habitat. I'm sure I don't need to remind the Parliament that uh, Scottish Natural Heritage sanctioned the killing of ruddy ducks, which were an invasive species, and, and mating with our native ducks in Scotland, or the rem removal of hedgehogs from Barra, or particularly when it comes to in, uh, native species, some of the work that's going on to control deer. Some of the headlines that this Parliament will see about controlling deer at the moment I have to question, but it appears that they don't seem to need the same protection. I'm seeing hinds being shot, heavily pregnant in calf, by government agencies, and by some, in some cases by uh, organisations that say they're doing it in the public interest. I question that when it, the, the uh, animals are left shot where they're lying. So we cannot be squeamish, though, about controlling animals if we do it in the right way and in the right format. And therefore, I seek this Parliament to allow land managers to have the ability to kill mink, an invasive, non-native species that is destroying our flora and fauna without control, and for the Parliament to give its approval for rabbits to be removed from this bill because there is no need for them to be there in the same way that there's no need for rats to be there. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mounte, could I ask you to move the Amendment 22, please? Mr Mounte, could I ask oh, you Sorry, to... Presiding Officer, I, I, I didn't hear. I, mo I move the amendment in my name. Very grateful. Um, uh, I now call Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 24 and other amendments in the group. Ms. Thank Hamilton. you, Presiding Officer. Amendment 24 in my name would add an exemption within this bill for hunting wild rabbits. There is an established need to control rabbit populations by this means. However, I recognise that simply creating a blanket exemption would potentially provide an excuse for the illegal act of hair coursing, but I'm yet to be convinced of that. By exempting rabbits, but only where landowners' permission has been explicitly obtained, this amendment would prevent those engaged in hair poaching from being able to avoid liability by claiming to be hunting rabbits. The amendment would therefore more effectively meet uh, the government's policy objective and assist Police Scotland with enforcement, which it obviously is struggling with right now, without harming the ability of land managers to effectively and humanely control rabbits. Uh, presiding officer, this bill means that all rabbits will now have to be shot, and there is no evidence to provide uh, support to the assumption that flushing rabbits uh, to be swiftly dispatched by dogs is a welfare concern, but I'd like to hear more from the Minister on that. And as my colleague Edward Mountain has so eloquently set out, there is also a failure to understand the fundamental differences between rabbits and hares. And rabbits do not engage in long chases, unlike hares, uh, which live permanently uh, in uh, above ground. And Rabbits spend most of their time, as he described, below ground, only coming out to graze and feed. So there are fundamental uh, differences between the two species. Um, I will be supporting the, am uh, the amendment from my colleague Edward Mountain. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms Hamilton, there's a couple of uh, members who wish to participate. I'd invite them to be relatively brief. Um, firstly, Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Amendment 22 in the name of Edward Mountain to remove mink uh, from the protection afforded by the Bill and Amendments 23 and 24 to remove rabbits from this protection, um, I do fear could create a loophole which allows for the unlimited use of dogs to chase and kill rabbits. Control is absolutely deemed necessary in many cases, but I believe there are far more um, humane methods that are available, so Labour could not support those amendments. Thank you, Mr Smith. A call from the Carson. 
Thank you, President Officer. As we've already heard from Rachel Hamilton, there's a failure to understand the fundamental differences between rabbit hunting and hare coursing. These facts are confirmed by the evidence of Professor Stephen Harris, a well-known opponent of hunting, during his evidence to the hunting hearing conducted by the Westminster Government in September 2002. In respect of the use of dogs to control rabbits, he stated, this process is very different from coursing hares. First, the quarry, the quarry is very much smaller. Uh, and this means that it's easier for a dog to kill a rabbit quickly. Secondary, the distance over which the hunt occurs is much shorter. Rabbits and hares are spatially separate, with hares remaining in the middle of open spaces, rabbits uh, to the edge of fields. Hares try to escape by outrunning their prey uh, because they have no natural predators. That chase, the chase may continue over long distances. Rabbits, in comparison, do not normally move more than 10 metres from cover, and their means of escape is a short dash to their warren, so the pursuit is extremely short. Whilst the aim of rabbiting with dogs is primarily press control as opposed to hare hunting, uh, which is solely sport, it probably makes an extremely small, if any, contribution to population control. And the vast majority of rabbits are killed by ferreting, gassing and shooting, and it's unlikely that rabbiting is less humane than any of these forms of control. The evidence uh, clearly shows that both in terms of welfare and necessary control of rabbits, that the Scottish Parliament was right to exclude rabbits from the scope of the 2002 Act. The assumption that shooting rabbits is somehow better in welfare terms than the use of dogs is simply wrong. Flushing and dispatching rabbits with dogs is both effective and humane. And the second argument advanced in favour of including rabbits in the bill is to prevent rabbit control from being used as an excuse for illegal hair poaching, uh, 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 commonly known as hair coursing. This is desirable but could be achieved by recognising that trespass was the primary ingredient of the fence, where the activity occurs on land without its owner's position, uh, permission by exempting rabbits, but only where landowners' permission has been explicitly obtained. I, I believe that the, the amendments that are brought forward uh, are lazy amendments, and we should look further at other alternatives than to include rabbits solely uh, to, to prevent hair coursing. Thank you. And I call the Minister. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. The um, definition of wild mammal used in the bill has been discussed extensively uh, during stage one and stage two. And when um, similar amendments to these were lodged at stage two, I made very clear that I would not, could not support any amendment which sought to exclude rabbits, mink or any other wild animal from the definition of wild mammal and therefore from the protections that they are afforded under the bill. Uh, the majority of Rain Committee members were of the same view as me and the amendments were defeated at stage two by seven votes to two. I haven't changed my opinion in the intervening period and will not be supporting either Rachel Hamilton or Edward Mountain's amendments today. And I'm happy just to say a very quick word with reference to both mink and rabbit as to why that is. Uh, on mink, removing them from the scope of the bill would allow them to be chased and killed by dogs. There is no rationale for this, and doing so, I think, would certainly have negative welfare implications. Now, it's worth pointing out that minks can still be controlled under the bill for many of the reasons that Edward Mountain set out, including um, if regarded or required to be controlled as part of a, an invasive non-native species scheme. Um, but we did hear during stage two that they can be effectively managed by other means such as trapping. And I would ask Parliament to note that mink are currently included within the definition of wild mammal under the 2002 Act. That means that it's currently illegal to chase and kill them and Edwards Mountain's uh, amendments would therefore represent a step backwards um, and I want to move forward so we'll not be supporting them. Um, equally on rabbits, uh, the policy rationale for including them within the definition of wild mammal has been set out clearly in the process of the bill. It's been rehearsed by some members today. I've spoken at length about why they have been included. Um, this is for two reasons. Firstly, to close the loophole whereby persons would seek to uh, engage in hair coursing uh, were claiming that they were hunting rabbits. And secondly, for animal welfare reasons. Yes, I'm happy to. Finley Carson. Thank you for the Minister for taking intervention. I should may recall that during our evidence session, Detective Sergeant Telford told the, the committee that, and I quote, that it is it's a difficult one with regards to rough shooting, that uh, that is where intent would come into it, and it might be difficult to differentiate. That opportunity is always going to be there. If dogs are flushed, flushing game legally, but encounter a mammal and chase it, that risk is there. I do not know whether that is necessarily addressed by the bill. 
And further, when pressed on the possibility of reports of illegal hunting to the police in connection with shoots involving dog, he replied, we will not know until the new regime is introduced. Minister, is that a good way to introduce new laws? Minister. Um, presenting officer, I, I was listening very carefully there, but I'm struggling to attribute what Finlay Carson has quoted at me to the issue of rabbits and hare coursing. Um, rough shooting was a, was a previous group, but you know, I take it that all these things are connected. Since he mentions uh, Detective Sergeant Telford, let me point to something he did say in the um, course of our discussion on rabbits, which is that Police Scotland welcomes the inclusion of rabbits because it would, to an extent, negate the excuse that the dogs were hunting rabbits rather than hares. He went on to say at stage two, in relation to the enforcement of hare coursing offences, the addition of rabbits would aid police investigations. Rachel Hamilton then asked, is that based on evidence? DS Telford replied, yes, I would say that it is. Um, presiding officer, so for those reasons, because it's important for the welfare of rabbits, sentient beings like hares, and to uh, seek to overcome the excuse uh, for hare coursing, and uh, I cannot support the removal of these species from the definition of wild mammal. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I, am, I invite Edward Mountain to wind up. Press a withdrawal amendment 22. Yes, uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'll keep my comments short. I'm, I'm sorry that we're moving on without considering the real issues here. The issue being that we I think all accept that mink, as a non-native uh, non invasive species, is a real challenge to Scotland's flora and fauna. And therefore, we, by this bill, are going to limit the control of that species, which I think is against Scotland's interest. It's certainly against the interest of some of the iconic species. And if I may just point out that I know uh, Ariane Burgess, presiding officer, mentioned earlier, foxes don't predate capercaillie, or that wasn't the case from the RSPB. I, I would actually respectfully suggest that they do in the same way that mink do. And if uh, Ms Burgess needs evidence of that, there was a period of uh, two years where they didn't control foxes on Abernethy, that's the RSPB, and then they went back to controlling foxes because they do. Mink are the same problem as foxes and they need to be controlled and we shouldn't be limiting it. I understand also uh, the Minister's reluctance uh, to remove rabbits based on the fact that she thinks people are going to misidentify them. I say as a countryman, I thought the only time that rabbits were uh, misconstrued as hares or hares misconstrued as rabbits was when people were watching Bugs Bunny because clearly... Yes, I would. But if I may, Tim clearly, if I can just finish this point, if I can clearly make the point, Bugs Bunny is, of course, not a bunny, but a hare. And we all know that. So I'll take the intervention. Jim Fairley. Thanks, Edward Mountain, for bringing a wee bit of humour to the debate. Um, but we do not recognise that the bill isn't about people who are doing legitimate exercises. It's about people who are trying to break the law. And the people who are trying to break the law know the difference between a rabbit and a hare, but they're using that as a cover. Edward Mountain. Well, <laughs> that, that, that to me is an extremely weak argument on the fact that if you're changing the law, uh, if, if, sorry, it's very, difficult, it's very difficult to give you an answer to the question if you're talking at the same time as I'm trying to do it. Through the, through the chair, please, Mr Mountain. So if, if you are changing... Sorry, sorry. Uh, if, if you're going to change the law because the existing law about coursing is insufficient and the police don't have the resources or the knowledge to implement it, by disadvantaging, disadvantaging those people who are abiding by the law and controlling animals that are a problem in Scotland, then that is a weak excuse. I, I will say no more because it is obvious uh, that people have made their minds up, but I, I think both of these species should not be within the... I'm afraid I'm closing. I, I, I think there is little point from, from the barracking that's going on that I'm going to get anyone to listen to me. Can you confirm you're pressing the amendment? I do press the motion. Thank you. The, amendment, uh, the question is that Amendment 22 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. There'll be a vote. A member should cast their votes now.
Coco Cap Stewart. On behalf of Stuart Macmillan, I vote no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 22 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes 28, no 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 23 in the name of Edward Mountain. Already debated with amendment 22, Edward Mountain, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. There'll be a vote. A member should cast the votes now. And I call Co-Cab Stewart. Uh, on behalf of Stuart McMillan, I vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 23 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 28, no, 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore uh, not agreed. I call Amendment 24 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with Amendment 22. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division. Member should cast the votes now. I call Co Cab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan's vote is no. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 24 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 27, no 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 25 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with amendment 19. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved, presiding officer. The question is that amendment 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now.
And I call Co Cab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan's vote is no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 25 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 24, no 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not uh, agreed. I call amendment 26 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that amendment 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. There'll be a vote. Members should cast their votes now. And I call Co Cab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan votes no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that uh, is recorded. The vote is now closed. Uh, point of order, Rachel Hamilton. Uh, thank you. My app wasn't working. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. I'll make sure that that is recorded. And the result of the vote on amendment number 26 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 89. There were no abstentions. That amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 27 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not? Moved. That is moved. The question is that amendment 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a vote. Members should cast their votes now. Co-Cab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded. The vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on Amendment 27 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 28 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 19. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Move, Presiding Officer. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 28 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a vote. Members should cast their votes now.
Paul Kokab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that is recorded. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Kenneth Gibson. Connect to the platform, I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr Gibson. I'll make sure that is recorded. Point of order, Faisal Chowdhury. My app didn't connect. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr Chowdhury. I'll make sure that's recorded. And the result of the vote on amendment number 28 uh, in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 25, no 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not uh, agreed to. I call amendment 29 in the name of Rachel Hamilton already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that amendment 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. Parliament uh, will have a division and members should catch their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms Stewart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 29 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 30 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that uh, amendment 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call co -Cab Stuart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms Stuart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 30 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 28, no 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 31 in the name of Ariane Burgess. Already debated with amendment 19. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that amendment 31 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now.
call Cook up Stuart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms Stuart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote uh, on Amendment Number 31 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes, 25, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 32 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. That is moved. The question is that Amendment 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division, and members should cast their votes now. And I call Co Cab Stuart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms. Stuart. I'll make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 32 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 28, no, 91. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 33 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 20. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stuart. Stuart Macmillan, no. Thank you, Ms. Stuart. Make sure that's recorded and the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment number 33 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 28, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We move to group four, exceptions, condition of killing the wild mammal. I call amendment 34 in the name of Colin Smith, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. Uh, I call Colin Smith to move amendment 34 and speak to the other amendments in the group. Mr Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Amendment 34, which I move in my name, and Amendments 56, 61 and 70 in my name would remove the use of a bird of prey as a permitted method of killing. This is neither a humane nor an efficient method of killing, and there is no justica justification for it being a permitted method other than for the use of, uh, other than, uh, any more than for the use of dogs to kill to be a permitted method. The Scottish Animal Welfare Commission, in its response to the RAIN Committee consideration of this bill, said that it was, and I quote, not aware of any evidence that killing by a bird of prey is more humane than killing by a dog. It would certainly doubt that it could be more humane than competent shooting. 
It is clear that the exception is not in line with the intentions of the Bill, so I urge members to support my amendments to remove the practice of using a bird of prey as a method of killing wild animals. Amendments 1, 9, 10, 11 and 12 in my name would specify that dogs are not used to kill an injured wild mammal. This would ensure more humane methods are used to kill a wounded animal and avoid this scenario being used as a cover story if a dog is used to kill. It is crucial that we do not allow any loopholes to remain in the Bill which may allow people to continue to use dogs to kill wild mammals. I brought amendments forward at stage two, which sought to make the same changes to sections three, five, six and seven, and now section six A, which has since been added into the bill. The Minister offered to work with me on the wording of those amendments to ensure the language is consistent with the rest of the bill. I am grateful for that work that has been done to achieve these amendments today. I will take a, a brief intervention. Smith for taking the intervention. I have got a quote here. Um, the weight of the evidence, as noted in the Burns report at paragraph 6.48, is that in the vast majority of cases, the time to insensibly and, and death in these situations is no more than a few seconds. These provisions were enacted in the knowledge of the terms of the Burns report. No evidence has been presented to indicate the abuse of these provisions by using dogs to dispatch seriously injured or often wild, wild animals. This quote comes from the, the Bonnemey Review, which has been used to inform this bill. Could Colin Smith provide any evidence contrary to these findings? Colin Smith. I have to say, I am sure Finlay Casson would probably use the same argument when it comes to hunting in, hunting in general. He wants to see, frankly, dogs being used to kill animals. And I just fundamentally disagree. I believe that there are far more alternatives that can be used that are far more humane, uh, certainly in the case of shooting. So I simply disagree with him uh, on that particular point. As I said, President Officer, um, I am grateful for the work that has been done to, 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 on the amendments that I bring forward um, to uh, this, this section of the bill, particularly in relation um, to the use of, of um, dogs. Uh, not being allowed when it comes to um, injured animals. Amendments 35, 57 and 62 and 71 in the name of Rachel Hamilton adds the caveat in the circumstances to the requirement to kill an injured wild mammal in a way that causes the minimal possible suffering. The existing condition already refers to reasonable steps being taken, so I believe the condition has already been caveated. I therefore urge members to support my amendments to ensure that the, the only the most humane methods are used to kill wild mammals and that under no circumstances are dogs used to do so. Thank you, Mr Smith. Uh, and I call Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 35 and other amendments in the group. Ms Hamilton. Uh, thank you. I will firstly um, speak to Colin Smith's amendment. Um, it would be, of course, it is very important that we are all looking at this from the angle of uh, animal welfare. And I am just envisaging um, a, an animal that had been injured. And is Colin Smith saying that a dog handler would just allow um, uh, say a fox to just run injured um, if it went through a line of guns. I mean, it's just it's just a point that I'm thinking of um, that perhaps Colin Smith should consider. Um, on that basis, I mean, we um, will not be supporting Colin Smith's amendment, but perhaps he could answer that question in summing up. Um, amendments 35, 57, 62, and 71 in my name aim to address a potential problem in the existing wording, which leaves it unclear as to what amounts to taking reasonable steps to use the method that causes the minimum possible suffering. It needs to be made clear that causing the minimal possible suffering in the context in which the person is operating constitutes taking reasonable steps. The addition of in the circumstances makes clear that what is the method of minimum suffering will vary depending on circumstances. Even if there could be a method which could objectively said to cause less suffering but was not possible in the circumstances, it also avoids the argument as to which method is in fact the one that causes the minimum possible suffering. The bill would otherwise impose unreasonable expectations upon those who are using dogs for the purposes of hunting wild mammals in the context of, for example, farmers protecting livestock or gamekeepers controlling populations of uh, wild species. It is important that their work, which is vital to Scotland's food security and the preservation of Scotland's biodiversity, is set in its proper context throughout this bill, and that is what these amendments seek to do. Um, I will be supporting Edward Mountain's amendment in this grouping. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms Hamilton. I call Edward Mountain to uh, speak to Amendment 36 and other amendments in the group. Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I state again at the outset, surely what we all must want to do is to ensure the hum humane dispatch of animals, which is why this amendment, my amendment in this group, Amendment 36, seeks to do just that. When you get into thick cover, it is very difficult sometimes to track down a wounded animal. And I know Mr Fairley used this as an example during committee debates. And I asked the Cabinet Secretary regarding animals that may have been injured. For example, a deer with a broken leg may well be easier to follow up. And it might be possible to follow that animal up in, in open ground, although you have to move very quickly, but in closed ground using just two dogs where it can move round within, say, a bracken or some rhododendrons would be virtually impossible, despite the fact it's only moving on three legs. Mm -hmm. However, where a deer has got a broken jaw, and it does happen, sometimes shots go astray, sometimes they get damaged uh, or injured, I should say, in road traffic accidents, it is virtually impossible for two dogs to keep pace in cover with a deer. That is why I would like to see more dogs uh, being available to deal with injured animals. It came home to me at the weekend when I went over to Gerlock and I saw on the edge of the road a deer that had been struck, obviously a stag that had been stuck either by a lorry or a car. Its antler was lying on the road and it was standing on the edge of the road with a broken bottom leg. Now, in this case, because it was snowy and open hill, it was very possible for the stalker who I rang up and contacted to come out and dispatch that animal. If that had been in a woodland setting, a stalker going out with two dogs could have spent days, literally days, looking for that animal. Which is why I support the fact that should an animal be injured, that people are given the opportunity to catch up with it and dispatch it as quickly as possible. Now, that's why I support, I would also support not only my amendment, but uh, Rachel Hamilton's amendment. And I would just like to make a comment, if I may, presiding officer, on Colin Smith's amendment. To me, this is a misconception that falconry uh, would l result in the prolonged suffering of animals. Now, I've never seen it in real life, but I know for a fact golden eagles often hunt in the winter and sort out the young calves from their mothers, or the younger calves from their mothers, and harry them till they're driven over a cliff face and, and killed, and then they eat the carrion down below. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about in this case with falconry is falcons, possibly not even domestic uh, 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 native species, being used to kill an animal, which is done, in the most cases I've seen it, extremely quickly and with little suffering. So I cannot support uh, Colin Smith's amendment. But I would ask the Parliament, please be very careful when you're voting, th if you vote against my amendment, to remember that by doing so, you are possibly prolonging the suffering of an animal, which is not something that I would ever seek to do. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr Mountain. I call Ariane Burgess to make a brief intervention. Thank you. I'd like to speak in support of Colin Smith's amendments in this group. Colin's amendments 34, 56, 61 and 70 seek to remove bird of prey from the permitted methods of killing a wild mammal throughout the bill. Several stakeholders told the Rural Affairs Committee about the animal welfare impact of killing with a bird of prey. The government's own Scottish Animal Welfare Commission stated that, quote, the impact of the welfare of the hunted animal is likely to be similar whether killed by a dog or a bird of prey. Further, if a fox is the target species, then there is also a risk to the bird of prey. That's why the SSPCA doesn't support falconry for population management and why they questioned why birds of prey are included when the purpose of wildlife control after all other options have been exhausted. And it's why the RAIN report states that it is not clear to the committee why birds of prey are one of the two permitted methods of killing under the bill. I also support Collins Amendments 1, 9, 10, 11 and 12, which stipulate that if the wild mammal is injured, it can't be killed using a dog. Instead, a more humane method must be used. Conversely, 
I wish to oppose Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 57, which seemed to weaken the requirements to minimise suffering when killing an injured mammal by adding in the circumstance. I won't take an, in I won't take an intervention because I was making a brief comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Burgess. And I now call the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'll begin by addressing Colin Smith's amendments 34, 56, 61 and 70. Uh, these amendments would make it unlawful for a person to use a bird of prey to kill a wild mammal which had been searched for, stalked or flushed by dogs. Um, as dogs play an important role in falconry, these amendments, if passed, would in effect ban certain types of falconry by the back door. I said in relation to Colin Smith's amendments 60 and 64 that I appreciated some people would like to see falconry banned. However, it is currently a permitted activity in Scotland, so long as it's done in accordance with relevant legislation. And as we seek here uh, to come together and to end illegal hunting, we must guard against our actions impinging on otherwise lawful activity, and therefore I can't support those uh, amendments. However, moving to uh, Mr Smith's amendments 1, 9, 10, 11 and 12, these elaborate on methods of dispatch which cause the minimum possible suffering. Uh, I listened very carefully to uh, Colin Smith's reasons for his similarly proposed amendments at stage two. I said at the time, while they did not work as they were introduced, um, I would be happy to work with him to bring something back. And I, I've been very clear throughout the progression of the bill that the chasing and killing of a wild mammal by a dog has no place in modern Scotland. This amendment makes that clear by stating that killing a wild mammal in a way that causes it the minimal possible suffering, as required by the bill, will never allow it to be killed by a dog or dogs. I think this is a very important provision. I think it goes to the heart of the bill, and I'm pleased to have worked with Colin Smith on it. Uh, moving to Rachel Hamilton's amendments 35, 57, 62 and 71, uh, the bill provides the condition that if an attempt to kill the wild mammal results in it being injured but not killed, reasonable steps must be taken in a way that causes it uh, to kill it in a way that causes minimal possible suffering. And Rachel Hamilton's amendments seek to caveat that requirement by adding the words in the circumstances. Uh, now, I have listened to what Rachel Hamilton said. However, um, I remain of the view that these amendments are... Uh, they are not necessary, and I do uh, fear they could weaken the provision. Uh, as currently worded, the bill already implicitly provides that the minimum possible suffering may depend on the circumstances. Um, a person can only ever act in the circumstances in which they find themselves. Um, yes, happy to. Uh, thank the Minister for taking intervention. When, when it comes to uh, Colin Smith's amendment regarding killing with a dog, can I ask the Minister? What she suggests should happen if a fox was shot and injured as it passed through a line of guns and took off open over ground, uh, should the dog handler just stand and watch the fox disappear to potentially die uh, an agonising death under cover when they have the means to deal with it humanely and quickly? Can I suggest that Colin Smiths and others are considering legislation to deal with uh, a circumstance which may infrequently happen uh, and, and, and with regards to the misuse of the legislation, but uh, it's fallen in deaf ears when it comes to welfare issues that will happen. Uh, and, and it questions whether welfare is at the heart of the decisions being taken through this amendment. I, th I think the key point of Finlay Carson's intervention is an important one. Um, I understand that there has to be provision for where an animal is injured or killed for it to be located and dispatched as quickly and as, as effectively and as humanely as possible. That's why at stage two I introduced amendments to allow the use of two dogs to search for an injured animal and to allow the use of two dogs to um, search for a, a dead animal. What will never be acceptable and what hasn't been legal for 20 years is to allow a dog to chase and to rip apart a wild mammal and that should remain the case now. Um, but just continuing... Yes, sure. Rachel Hamilton. Can I, can I just clarify if the Minister is supporting Colin, amend, uh, Colin Smith's amendment? This is the one that uh, the Minister worked with Colin Smith on Amendment 12. Um, does the Minister believe then that um, the amendment that uh, where she listened to individuals who talked about the injured am animal that would be covered under that amendment rather than this which actually contradicts um, the animal welfare at that point. Minister. Presiding officer, I'm sorry I can't follow. 
uh, the point that Rachel Hamilton was making there. I'm more than happy to take another intervention if she wants to put it to me again. Rachel Hamilton. To, it's in, thank you. It's in reference to Finlay Carson's uh, intervention with regards to an, an injured animal not being allowed to be um, uh, dispatched by a dog at the point it was injured. Minister. Thank you, and I appreciate Rachel Hamilton clarifying that point, but it brings me back to my, my point before that Thanks to amendments brought forward at stage two, if the bill is passed, there will be provision for dogs to search for an injured animal and to search for a dead animal so that it can then be dispatched in the most humane and uh, effective way possible. But that will, uh, if we pass the amendment which Colin Smith and I worked on together, never constitute killing by a dog. Um, if I can move on to Amendment 36 in the name of Edward Mountain, I'm afraid I can't support this one either. Uh, this appears to seek to allow a pack of dogs to kill a wild mammal without any caveats at all. Um, under this amendment, a person need only attempt to kill the wild mammal before they could set a pack of dogs on it. Um, and I've been very clear that, that banning the chasing and killing of a wild mammal with packs of dogs is the fundamental premise of this bill. I'm happy to give way. Edward Mountain. Uh, thank, thank you, Minister. I'm, I'm grateful that you gave way. That is definitely not my intention. I think the amendment makes it clear that the intention is to allow more than two dogs to hunt for an injured animal. It is not a question of hunting and killing for it. It's hunting it and flushing it so that it can be dispatched humanely. Would that not be in the way that all people in the countryside believe that animals should be dispatched? And she will, will she not reconsider this? Because if, if I had the long time to do it, you'd go and get a license and you might be allowed more dogs. This is urgent, where an animal is suffering and you want to dispatch it. I, I think the Minister may have misunderstood but I, but the amendment. Minister. Uh, Presiding officer, I just clarify to Edward Mountain on this and to the other instances where he suggests that I have misunderstood him. I haven't. I am just exploring the multifaceted uh, issues that he raises. Now, I understand the, the situation that he presented is one where uh, you may find an injured animal. What I'm telling him is that the provisions brought forward at stage two to use dogs to search for that animal, to use dogs to search for a dead animal, I believe are sufficient to uh, rise to the circumstances that he describes. The other side of that, of course, is that we have to guard against any provision we introduce being used as a loophole, as we know was the case in the 2002 Act. And my fear with the amendment that he puts forward, which would allow a pack of dogs to search for an injured animal, would be used as a loophole in the aftermath of the bill. And therefore, for that and other reasons, I, I cannot support it. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. I uh, would advise members that um, they will note that we have passed the agreed time limit for the debate on this group to finish. I exercise, in fact, my power under Rule 9.8.4a uh, brackets c, close brackets, to allow debate on this group to continue beyond the limit in order to avoid the debate being unreasonably curtailed. I call on Colin Smith Smith to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 34. Mr Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the Government's support for my amendments to stop the use of dogs being used to kill an injured uh, wild mammal. I think the Minister has very much addressed the scenarios that were raised by, by Finlay Carson and Rachel Hamilton. I think there is also a real genuine concern that allowing dogs to be used to kill animals in any circumstances could be used as a cover for the use of dogs being dispatched to kill animals in all circumstances. And I think that would very much undermine a key aim of this bill. Uh, however, I am disappointed that there was not more support for I will take an intervention on that. Rachel Hamilton. I accept Colin Smith um, is opposed to certain aspects of um, rural country sports. However, I think Colin Smith needs to look at um, the, the fact that this could undermine the highest standards of animal welfare. Dispatching um, uh, a wild predator um, efficiently and effectively is really important in the toolbox for uh, particularly farmers. Colin Smith. I have to say uh, to Rachel Allen, I'm not opposed to sport. What I'm opposed to is, is uh, intolerable animal cruelty. And I do think that one of the, uh, one of the concerns... 
One of the concerns, and you know, this Parliament probably had this debate over 20 years ago, but whether or not it was um, acceptable to use dogs to, to, to tear um, uh, mammals apart. Um, we thought that issue was settled. It seems, however, it's not settled in the eyes of uh, Rachel Hamilton. And as I said, I am disappointed that there is not more support for my further amendments to remove uh, the bird of prey as a permitted uh, method of killing. As I said earlier during the debate on Group 2, the government's argument that preventing wild mammals being killed by a bird of prey seems to centre around, well, it's already a permitted activity. Um, but actually, this parliament has the power to change that. So I do think this is quite um, a weak uh, 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 argument, and I do think this is a missed opportunity to ensure this bill is as strong on animal welfare as it could be. The Minister argued um, that it was not included in the original scope of the bill. Uh, well, as I said in the opening comments, um, if it is the right thing to do, the Government has form in previous legislation when it suits them to introduce additional amendments. Therefore, uh, I am right happy to press Amendment 34. In my name. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 34 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Uh, there will be a division. A member should cast their vote now. I call Cook up Stuart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stuart. <laughs> the vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 34 in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 25, no, 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 1 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 34. Colin Smith, to move or not move? Move. The question is that amendment 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. Therefore, there will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call Cook up Stuart. Yes. Okay. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number one in the name of Colin Smith is yes, 88, no, 27. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 
uh, 35 in the name of Rachel Hamilton. Already debated with Amendment 34. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament has not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 35 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 89. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 36 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with amendment 34. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Thank you. The question is that amendment uh, 36 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is now closed. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 36 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 28, no, 90. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We will now move on to group five, licenses for use of more than two dogs. I call amendment 37 in the name of Ariane Burgess, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. And I would point out that if Amendment 41 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 42 or 43. And if Amendment 75 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 76 or 77 as a result of preemptions. I call on Ariane Burgess to move Amendment 37 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you. My amendments in this grouping seek to make the licensing scheme more stringent, accountable and transparent so it, can be so it can't be used as a loophole for the very forms of hunting that this bill seeks to ban. I, I'm going to stop for a moment because I'm finding it distracting while people are leaving the room. Uh, could, could I ask members who are leaving the chamber to please do so quietly and quickly? Ms Burgess. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendment 37 and 72 are intended to determine if more detail will be required as part of the licence application process on what the dogs will be used for. Sections 4 and 8 do state that the licensing authority may be required may require specific information as part of an application, but it notes only that this may include the number of dogs and the number of guns 
the applicant would like to use. I believe it's just as important for the licensing authority to be told exactly what the applicant intends to do with those dogs and guns. For example, if the applicant wants to hunt under the exception of preventing the spread of disease, then they should explain which disease, which species will be targeted, how many animals and how many will be killed. My amendments 47 and 81 are also about detail. They specify a few reporting requirements, including the number of wild mammals hunted or killed, the specific location where any kills occurred, and crucially, whether this achieved the purpose for which the license was granted. It may be that the licensing authority, understood to be Nature Scott, would require such de detail as they do, for example, on the beaver license return, returns forms. But I'd like reassurance that this will definitely be the case. Amendment 45 and 79 would ensure that licenses only allow the minimum number of dogs that Nature Scott believes would be effective. The bill currently says that they may only permit the minimum number of dogs, but that sounds like they could also choose to permit more. This amendment moves that, removes that ambiguity. I'm sure that Nature Scott will be sensible about the number of dogs that should be allowed for licensed hunting, but this stipulation would help remind them to keep thinking every time they issue a license what is the maximum number of dogs that should be allowed in that particular case. My Amendment 93 on a register of licenses was inspired by Christine Graham's. After, after discussing the details with both Christine Graham and the Minister, I felt it was important to add to Ms. Graham's idea. My amendment replicates her point that Nature Scott must keep a register of licenses, but applies this to Section 8 as well as Section 4, meaning it applies to all licenses. Instead of requiring the entire register to be published, this could pose data protection concerns. My amendment specifies certain data. My amendment specifies certain data that must be made publicly available, such as the number of dogs permitted and the location where the hunting is allowed. Finally, my amendment requires that this data is made available before the start date of the license. This way, if enforcement officers or members of the public witness, witness somebody using multiple dogs for hunting, they can consult the public register to check that the activity is licensed. This would improve transparency, accountability and enforcement. I also support Christine Graham's amendment, but would encourage members to vote for mine as well for the reasons outlined. My amendments 38 and 73 require licensed applications to be accompanied by an ethical wildlife management plan, which must be accepted by... I won't take them. I've got a lot to get through, and I'm aware about... I've heard about time. My amendments 38 and, and 73 require licensed applications to be accompanied by an ethical wildlife management plan, which must be accepted by Nature Scott before a license is granted. Amendments 51 and 84 define the ethical wildlife management plan and explain that it must cover what it must cover. In brief, it must set out how the applicant will achieve a long-term solution that causes the least harm to the fewest number of animals. This draws on the seven international principles for ethical wildlife control, which have been debated in this chamber, thanks to Colin Smith, and considered extensively by the RAIN Committee. In fact, the government's own Scottish Animal Welfare Commission stated that it would be valuable to apply the international consensus principles for ethical wildlife control to this bill. Amendments 39 and 74 would give Nature Scott the power to reject the license application on the basis of an unsatisfactory ethical wildlife management plan or require it to be revised. My remaining amendments in this grouping also aim to ensure that any license hunting with dogs is as ethical as possible, but they take a more open approach. Amendments 50, 52, 83 and 85 broadly define ethical wildlife management, drawing on Nature Scott's definition of wildlife management and evidence received by the Rural Affairs Committee about the importance of an evidence-based approach which prior prioritises animal welfare. Amendments 44 and 78 simply state that Nature Scott must be satisfied that the hunting will comply 
with the best practice in ethical wildlife management. This avoids locking in any specific ethical principles or requirements at this time. And Amendment 53 and 86 give Scottish ministers powers to provide further information on any of the definitions in subsection 6, meaning that they could identify, develop or update a set of principles or criteria for best practice which could draw on the, out, draw on the outcome of the forthcoming species licensing review. Amendment 40 is a consequential formatting change. Coming on to other amendments in this group, I will support Colin Smith's amendments 46, 49, 80 and 82 on the same topic of ethical wildlife management. Amendments 46 and 80 add adhering to a set of standards based on ethical wildlife management to the list of licensed compliance conditions which Nature Scott may set. These amendments do not specify a particular set of standards. While his amendment 49 and 82 do define ethical principles for the context of this bill, like my amendments on the ethical wildlife management plans, these are based on the seven international ethical principles. I also support Christine Graham's amendments 2 and 3 to remove the option of granting a licence to a whole category of persons to help ensure that licensing remains the exception to an exception. I do not support any of Rachel Hamilton's amendments in this group as they seek to loosen up the licensing scheme rather than strengthen it and they open up new exceptions for more hunting with dogs. I move my um, uh, amendment 37 and all other amendments of my other amendments in this grouping, and I urge members to support them. I ask also that the committee, to, I, I ask also that members support Christine Graham's and Colin Smith's amendments, but to vote against Rachel Ham Hamilton's amendments in this group. Thank you. Thank you. I call Christine Graham to speak to Amendment 2 and other amendments in the group. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I intend only to speak to my amendments in the group in the interest of time. Amendments 2 and 3 together both seek to delete from section 44A and 45A the phrase, quote, category of persons. My rationale for this is and was, and the Minister knows I raised this at stage 2 as a probing amendment, that was unclear as to the legal status of, quote, category of persons, especially in relation to enforcement or breach of a licence, who to charge, for example, if a licence holder breaches the terms. I further note that section 4, subsection 1, and quote, a person, I quote from that, may apply for a licence permitting the use of more than two dogs, etc. A person. No addition of category of persons. Now, that seems to me to be, at the very least, a technical inconsistency. So, as 44A refers to grant of a licence to a person or category, and similarly section 45A refers again to a person or category. As I say, this seems inconsistent with section 4 brackets 1, and I look forward to the Minister's explanation if I've misunderstood the position. Oh, I turn now to... <laughs> I thought that was me finished. I turn now to Amendment 4 which basically seeks for the register of licences to be public with other bits, but this is the main bit. And again, I raise this at stage two as a probing amendment. The Minister's response, and I'm going to quote it, it quotes, I'm sympathetic to that. Transparency in how licences operate is always desirable. Nature Scott already successfully shares a lot of information on wildlife management licences, not least, as has been said recently, in detailed reporting on the operation of the licences to manage beavers, so there is a precedent. There are also plans to publish data on all of Nature Scott's licences, but we need to work carefully through the general data protection regulation legislation in order to do that in a way that is legally watertight and does not undermine the GDPR. That being the case, having listened to the exchanges, I will continue to consider Christine Graham's point. And I assure her today that I'll commit to going as far as possible within the remit of GDPR to publish what it is that she's asking for. Now, I haven't seen anything um, in, as an amendment from the government. And again, I ask for an explanation from the minister because my concerns are this, if it's not a public register, and I know that the, in exceptional circumstances of a license is granted, it goes to the land, 
However, how does an observer or someone who takes a particular interest in this know if there's been a breach of the terms of that licence if they don't know what land it exists over and who is responsible for the exercise of that licence? Thank you. Thank you. I call Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 41 and other amendments in the group. Ms Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendments 41 and 75 in my name aim to reflect oral evidence in the RAIN Committee, stating that effectiveness is to be understood as relating to whether the alternatives were practical and possible. There needs to be clarity on the face of the Bill that this is the case. There may be alternatives that could be effective, but are not necessarily practical affordable or indeed in the best interests of the welfare of the animals involved. These amendments would also help Nature Scott to avoid facing legal challenges to licences issued on the basis that they have failed to meet what amounts to a test where they must be satisfied that there is no alternative which would be effective. What really matters is whether the use of more than two dogs is necessary and will make a significant contribution to the purpose for which a licence is granted. The proposed wording of Amendments 41 and 75 would also recognise, as the current wording does not, that the use of dogs to flush the guns under licence does not mean that other methods of fox control will not carry on alongside licence control using dogs. Control is normally a combination of methods that complement one another and may be used concurrently. There is a danger of thinking that it is an either-or scenario, whereas the reality is successful predator control involves a variety of methods. Which methods are used and when, and where and how, and any combination of methods at any given time will depend on terrain and other considerations, which are best decided by those conducting the control and wildlife management on the ground. Amendments 42 and 76 in this group would replicate the wording in the 1981 Wildlife and Countryside Act as amended and it, as it applies in Scotland in relation to other wildlife licensing. As such, the relevant authority can issue a general licence for control of birds being satisfied. There is no other satisfactory solution, but the person relying on that licence must also be clear the action taken is necessary, and this can be done in conjunction with other methods being deployed. The evidence is clear that fox control is necessary, as accepted by the Scottish Government and Lord Bonamy, and that packs of dogs are key to that, even if in conjunction with other methods deployed concurrently. Amendment 43 and, 40 and 77 seek to recognise that predator control involves the use of a number of different methods that may be used concurrently and with different combinations at different times of the year and over different terrains, even on a single land holding. The need for use of a combination of methods in control of controlling foxes is no different from the licensing that applies for the control of, for example, birds to prevent damage. Amendment 48 aims to ensure the Bill recognises that fox control is a year-round activity. It's not simply undertaken when damage has occurred, but to prevent damage from occurring. Farmers and land managers should only need to apply for a licence annually. They can then deploy their licence days as needed, both in preventing damage and when needing to respond to the damage caused. Amendment 87, which follows on from uh, and would ensure, for the avoidance of doubt, the control of eradication of invasive species and other species, which are considered a pest to either hum humans, livestock or plants and animals, as uh, has been described in the Bill, uh, but would not breach the terms of a licence issued under Section 4 or 8 of the Bill. I've already outlined the need to ensure this Bill does not prevent individuals uh, from contributing to the control of pest species or invasive non-native species for the sake of Scotland's food security and biodiversity. This amendment would add to the provisions within this bill to ensure that that does not happen. Similarly, Amendment 90 would allow an individual to apply for a licence permitting the use of more than two dogs if they can demonstrate that control of a pest species would benefit the protection and restoration of ground nesting birds. And, the, and it's an arbitrary uh, distinction between those seeking to protect livestock and those seeking to achieve environmental benefit as part of a scheme which seems fairly discriminatory uh, to rural stakeholders. 
Amendment 88 in my name seeks to ensure the Bill upholds the rights of individuals to the peaceful enjoyment of their property. This right was enshrined in the Council of Europe since 1950. I have no doubt the Minister with legal background will be familiar with the case of Trey Tractora Acti Bolag versus Sweden, or at least the principle from it, that a licence for the use of the private property can constitute property itself. The principle was first legally established in the case of colonial sugar refining versus Melbourne Harbour Trust in 1927, in which it was found that rights cannot be de deprived unless that intention is made in clear and unambiguous terms on the face of the bill. If the Minister is unable to support my Amendment 88, it would mean, be very helpful if she could provide her assurances on record that this means that exercising one's rights under Article 1 will not be classed as a breach of condition, nor see any interference with the rights in possessing a licence, which, as I just mentioned, is also a property protected under Article 1. I would also ask that the Minister acknowledge that sometimes the circumstances of protecting livestock from harm will mean that there won't be a number of guns set up in prepared locations, while it is not always practical to meet all the other conditions set out in this section of the Bill. There will be times when farmers will need to take action which protects their possessions, their livestock, their livelihoods and will re reduce suffering to other animals. In such case cases, there would be no adverse effects in applying for a future licence, nor would they see a licence they may hold removed. Amendments 89 and 94 follow a similar vein to Amendment 90, which I have already discussed. These amendments outline further circumstances under which the use of more than two dogs would provide a practical solution to control pest species. These include pest control on rough and hilly ground, areas of dense cover, weather-related considerations, the management of wild boar and feral pigs, as seen in uh, Aberdeenshire recently, activities in heavily populated areas where guns cannot be used for various reasons, wild mammals involved in vehicle collisions, and animal welfare considerations, such as protecting dogs from exhaustion and ensuring pest species are humanely dispatched by trains, trained marksmen. It is important that these considerations, which we took evidence on in the RAIN Committee, are covered in this Bill, on the face of the Bill. This amendment is worded in such a way that Ministers can add to the circumstances under which a licence may be granted and allows the Parliament to make a final decision on whether provisions may be added to it. Amendment 91 ensures that licences are granted or rejected by the relevant authority in a timious manner by placing a duty on that authority to respond to an application within 30 days. The 30-day figure is based on the usual time it takes to get a wildlife uh, licence across the United Kingdom. Amendment 92 presiding officer makes provision for emergency licence applications in order to effectively achieve a purpose under section 32 or 72. Given pest control may sometimes uh, need to be undertaken at very short notice, reacting to scenarios such as livestock being attacked by foxes, there is a need to ensure that emergency measures can be taken when required in a proactive way when the use of more than two dogs would be an appropriate means of addressing such a scenario. Presiding officer, I will not be supporting all the other amendments in this group. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Colin Smith to speak to Amendment 46 and other amendments in the group. Mr Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The Bill as it stands would allow for a continuation of the use of packs of dogs in hunting under a licence, and it therefore fails to fully close the loopholes that exist in the current legislation. The Bill should not be repeating the mistakes that were made in the Protection of Wild Mammals Bill in 2002. It must have animal welfare at its heart and end the cruel activity of hunting with packs of dogs for good. It is therefore disappointing that previous attempts to remove Section 4 have been unsuccessful. So I and others have tabled amendments at Stage 3 to make sure any licensing system is as robust as it possibly can be. Amendments 46, 49, 80 and 82 in my name would allow Nature Scott to require licensed applicants to meet standards in the application process, drawn up in line with an ethical framework such as the international... Uh, I'll take an intervention. Yeah. Jim Fairley. Thank you, Colin Smith, for taking the intervention. Is the member not uh, satisfied with the fact that with a minimum number of guns at the end of a drive, that the fox isn't going to escape and therefore uh, allow a chase to ensue? Colin Smith. I'm not entirely clear that that, that 
would actually address the concern that people have that if you use a pack of dogs, the risk of one or more of those dogs chasing the fox is still there. That's the whole purpose of the bill, to try to minimise that risk by reducing the number of dogs to two. I'll take a further intervention if you want to. Okay. Yeah. I thank you for your generosity. The point is that when hounds are driving a fox through out of cover, generally the fox will never see the hounds until the very last moment of the chase. So if you're driving them out to standing guns, the fox will be shot before the hounds ever get anywhere near them. That's the purpose of the amendment that I put in at stage two, in order to take away that ability for hounds to be chasing foxes to kill them. Colin Smith. I, I, I still don't think that addresses the point. And the actual purpose of this bill is to reduce the number of dogs to two, to minimise the risk of dogs chasing and ultimately killing the fox. That's, that's the circumstances that the government are in favour of, of achieving. My argument is that that should be used in all circumstances so that the number of dogs should be reduced to two, which is the main aim of the bill. The government have a disagreement. They think PAC should continue to be allowed. But I, I, don't, I don't see what that point in any way is relevant that, 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 that Mr Fairley makes. Uh, but I, I, as I said, Amendments 46, 49, 1882 in my name would allow Nature Scott to require licensed applicants to meet standards in the application process drawn up in line with that ethical framework that I mentioned earlier, that international consensus principles for ethical wildlife control, which is an existing internationally recognised example of such standards. Amendments 14 and 82 would ensure that specific ethical principles are included in the face of the bill, enshrining them in law, namely to prioritise prevention and mitigation measures wherever possible, to demonstrate that serious damage is being caused to people, ecosystems or other animals, to set measurable adaptive outcome-based objectives that will reduce the damage, to be based on the specifics of the situation rather than wholesale application to target species, use methods that predictably minimise animal welfare harms and the number of animals harmed, integrate all measures into plans for systematic long-term management and base decisions on the specifics of the situation rather than wholesale application to target species. At stage two, the Minister argued that we should wait for the review by Nature Scott of licensed wildlife management. But during stage one, Nature Scott told the committee when given evidence that its approach is, and I quote, fairly well aligned with those ethical principles. It has also been argued that amendments in support of an ethical approach when considering the principles behind the criteria for an application for a licence somehow go against the shared approach to wildlife management. Well, first of all, there are a number of stakeholders who are part of the shared approach that actually oppose this bill altogether, a bill that makes far more widespread changes to wildlife management than my amendments on the licensing scheme. But the government and others do not mention that threat to the shared approach when arguing in support of the bill, and rightly so, because the shared approach is ultimately about working together on how best to do so within what legal framework this Parliament sets. And clearly, there would be a shared approach when it came to the final detail of any licensing application process. The Minister previously has also said uh, several times as the bills progress that, that she has not ruled out an ethical approach in the future. But this is the time to make up her mind. This bill has been delayed by several years already, and there has been ample opportunity to consider this matter. So, as well as my amendments, I fully support all of Ariana Burgess's amendments in this group, which also require anyone granted a licence must adhere to the principles of ethical wildlife management. Amendments 47 and 81 to specify further details that Nature Scott may require licence holders to report on, including the number of wild mammals killed and whether this achieved the purpose for which the licence was granted will help provide transparency and ensure that licences remain an exception to an exception. Amendments 41 to 43 and 75 to 77 in the name of Rachel Hamlin would all, in slightly different ways, lower the criteria for permitting the use of more than two dogs and therefore would weaken uh, what I think is already uh, a weak enough bill further. If we are to have a licensing at all, it is important that it is an exception to an exception, available only when no other method is available, uh, and therefore we strongly oppose those amendments. Amendment 91 would impose a, a time limit in which Nature Scott can respond to a licence application. And Amendment 92 would create a new emergency licence, which Nature Scott would be required to grant or refuse within 24 hours of receiving the application. These amendments would restrict, in my view, the agency's ability to carry out a comprehensive inquiry and assessment, and for this reason, we do not support them. I therefore urge members to support my amendments and those from Ariana Burgess to include the ethical principles for wildlife management on the face of this bill to ensure that the licensing scheme is as robust as possible and also support the amendments in Christine Graham's name on the issue of keeping a register. Thank you.
Thank you. I now call the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, this is a, a lengthy group, but I do want to uh, duly give the Government's response to members' um, amendments. So I'll try and be quick, um, but please do bear with me. I'll begin with uh, Amendments 37 and 72 in the name of Arianne Burgess, which seek to add to the Bill further examples of information which may be required by the Licensing Authority in an application under Sections 4 and 8. Uh, the Bill does already include, include uh, some of what will be required and states that any application for a licence must include any information that Nature Scott requires. This means the Licensing Authority already have very wide discretion over the information they will routinely request when developing the detail of the regime. Uh, I, I fear these amendments they risk becoming too prescriptive and there are practical difficulties with them. For example, the Bill already provides that the application must specify the species of wild animal to which it relates. Ms Burgess' amendment would add provision in respect of the number of wild mammals to which the application relates. I think that that would be practically difficult to anticipate and I'm very conscious of my own commitments that uh, although an exception to an exception and to be construed narrowly, I do want the licensing scheme to be workable where essential, so therefore I uh, cannot support these amendments. And on Ms Burgess' uh, amendments that will require the applicant to prepare and submit an ethical wildlife management plan, um, and amendments 44 and 78 requiring that before granting a licence, the authority must be satisfied that the use of the licence will comply with best practice in ethical wildlife management. Um, I would say that under the Bill, a licence will only be granted when the licensing tests have been met. And these tests include ensuring there is a valid reason for the species to be controlled, and crucially, and what we must not lose sight of, that there are no other solutions that would be effective in achieving the purpose. That is a rightly high bar, presiding officer. Uh, and while I am sympathetic to the intentions behind these amendments, I, I can't support them. Um, the requirement to be subject to an ethical wildlife management plan doesn't form part of any of the other licensing schemes operated by Nature Scott, uh, nor has it formed part of the evidence taken to now, so that even if we did agree it was appropriate, I don't think adding it ad hoc would be an uh, appropriate way to uh, go ahead. However, Ariane Burgess will be aware that under the Butte House Agreement, the Scottish Government will shortly commence a review of licensed wildlife management across the piece, and I hope she will appreciate um, that I shouldn't agree to impose changes on a particular category of licence before we have um, completed that review. There are also a number of, of technical issues with the amendment, but um, I won't necessarily go into the detail on them in the interests of time. Um, however, I would like to move to Ariane Burgess's amendments 47 and 79, uh, which change the test to must only. It's about tweaking the wording of the obligation on the licensing authority. Um, but I can't support these because they're not necessary. By stating that the licence may only permit the number of dogs, not that it may permit them, the effect is already that the licensing authority must always restrict the number of dogs to the minimum number, which would be uh, effective. So um, my point being that the provisions in the, the bill as drafted already rise to what I think Ms Burgess is seeking, and therefore I'd ask her not to press those ones. Um, moving to 47 and 81, um, they set out further examples of reporting requirements that could be included under sections 4 and 8. Uh, now, the bill already provides that a licence is subject to compliance with certain conditions, one of which is reporting requirements in relation to activities carried out under licence. Uh, the reporting requirements placed on licence holders are best decided, I believe, by Nature Scott in collaboration with stakeholders as the licensing scheme and accompanying guidance is developed. Uh, it is really not standard practice to include this kind of information on the face of a bill, and that was the case in the Wildlife and Countryside Act. Um, the bill is drafted to include a framework for licences so that guidance could be set out in consultation with stakeholders, and that work is very much underway, including with um, um, countryside management and animal welfare stakeholders, and for those reasons, I can't support those amendments. Moving to Ariane Burgess's amendments regarding uh, public register, 
I am sympathetic to the intentions here. I agree that uh, transparency is very important, not just in the way that the licence will operate, but for all of the licences operated by Nature Scott. And again, that's why, under the Butte House Agreement, we have committed, and I quote, to review the wider species licensing systems and the introduction of a public register of licences to improve transparency, bearing in mind data protection and safety of licence holders. So as I said when this uh, was discussed at stage two, I think it better to proceed uh, on the already agreed plans in the Butte House Agreement and to publish information in a coordinated way uh, so that I can fully consider the GDPR implications, which I'm sure will come to bear there. So I can't support that amendment. But I'd like, presiding officer, to move to uh, those amendments in the name of my colleague, Christine Graham, and firstly to amendments two and three, which relate to a category of persons. Um, I understand Ms Graham's desire to tighten the, the granting of licences. I agree that they should be drawn and construed narrowly, but equally that they should be workable and uh, available where essential. Now, sections 448 and 840 specify that applications for a licence can be granted to a person or a category of persons, and Ms uh, Graham's amendment uh, would seek to um, remove a category of persons. The law is clear that the word person includes corporate entities, companies and partnerships. Uh, so these amendments would still allow licences to be granted to informal bodies, as well as to individuals and other corporate entities such as companies and partnerships. However, um, they would not allow a licence to be granted to a broader category of persons, which might include, for example, farmers within a defined uh, geographical area. Yes, it will. Christine Graham. I just seek clarity on why the application is made by a person and not in conformity with the rest of that, which is our category of persons. So in terms of an applicant, let's say there's three landowners, A, B and C, and it's over the three areas of the land, because I do know it goes over the area of land. A applies for the licence. Do they then advise that they're doing it on behalf of themselves and B and C? I just want to know how this works, when it doesn't seem to me to be consistent across the sections. Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank um, Christine Graham for her intervention. And I'm, I was pleased, I was going to come on to that point, and, and I'm glad that she's brought it up, but I'm equally glad to um, assure her that it isn't a, a technical oversight. Uh, the reference to person and to persons just reflects the fact that a licence would be granted to a person uh, or, a, or groups of or, or, or persons, but Nature Scott would always require a named individual to be responsible for the licence. For example, in the, the um, situation that she narrates, three farmers could apply for a licence for three different farms, but would still require one individual to be responsible for that licence. Now, that might be... Uh, for reasons of being a point of contact, for reporting, perhaps as a point of contact for um, Police Scotland. And I know that in uh, previous discussions at stage two, Christine Graham has sought some reassurance as regards to liability and how that plays out with regards to the applicant and to who's uh, named on it. Um, I would point out that it will always be uh, the person committing the crime on the ground, first and foremost, who are liable. However, there are additional provisions in the Act by which a landowner or an applicant, if not the person carrying out the work on the ground, can be liable for knowingly causing or permitting illegal activity to take place on their land. And on top of this, Nature Scott has wide discretion under the Bill to decide not to issue a licence, for example, if they have any concerns about previous breaches to licence conditions or suspicion of illegal activity. And I hope that that gives Christine Graham some comfort. Moving to her Amendment 4, it's similar to Ariane Burgess's. Uh, this would require Nature Scott to make available a public register. Um, Ms Graham narrated some of what I said at Stage 2, which remains the case. I absolutely understand the desire for openness and for transparency. Um, but I do think that the right approach is to review this for wildlife licensing right across the piece and not take decisions on an ad hoc basis. Um, uh, briefly, Ms Graham, please. Very, very brief. Um, if not now, but certainly I hope in the debate, can the Minister give us some indication of, of when this review will take place and when we'll have a report on it? Briefly, Minister, please. Yeah, I'm pleased to. So the commitment is there in black and white in the Butte House Agreement. It is myself and the same uh, officials that are part of the bill team who will be undertaking that work. So uh, we hope to commence it very shortly, but I'm sure Ms Graham will understand that we would like to get this bill passed first. 
Um, moving to Rachel Hamilton's amendments, presiding officer, um, 41 to 3 and 50, 75 to 77. These amendments change the test. Yes, happy to. Uh, thank the Minister for taking an intervention. Uh, I understand Ms Hamilton's reasons for lodging Amendment 91. As I have raised concerns about Nature Scott's capacity to take on new responsibilities. Can I ask the Minister if she is confident that Nature Scott has both the relevant expertise and resource level to respond to licence applications within a realistic time frame? We all want the licensing scheme to be workable. Minister. Uh, thank you. Yes, I do. And I think it's an important question and it's something we obviously have to bear in mind as we create new responsibilities on Nature Scott as a licensing authority. But I have worked very closely with them as have officials throughout the development of this bill. They are both confident that they can manage the additional workload and equally they, are, uh, they have a long history of responding to licences uh, on a routine basis but equally being able to expedite licences where there is a need for urgency and I think that that would, um, that would continue in the course of this work. Um, I was speaking, however, presiding officer to Rachel Hamilton's amendments. Uh, I can't support 41 to 43 or 75 to 77 because they would change the test for obtaining a licence in a way that I think makes less clear what is required uh, both for the applicant and for the licensing authority. It appears to introduce a separate standalone test for the applicant to meet that it's necessary um, without specifying what that might mean in practice and so I cannot support uh, vague provisions in the legislation. Rachel Hamilton's amendment 48 uh, increasing the period of time in which a licence under Section 4 can be used from 14 days within a six-month period to 14 days over 12 months. I said in December at Stage 2, um, as part of my amendment, that I believe that 14 days over six months was an appropriate period of time, allowing flexibility without any more hunting days, and that hasn't changed from Stage 2, so I can't support those amendments. Moving as swiftly as possible on, presiding officer, to 87 and 88, also in the name of Rachel Hamilton. I have to admit that I have uh, struggled somewhat to understand the logic behind eight, amendments 87 and 88. To me, um, and this hasn't really changed from anything that I've observed this afternoon, they appear to try and write into the bill circumstances where a, a person would not be breaching licence conditions, even though they have demonstrably breached those conditions. Um, I think they undermine the provisions and the safeguards included in the licensing scheme and would create um, numerous loopholes. Amendment 87 would mean that a person could apply for a license, for example, for the use of more than two dogs for invasive na uh, non-native species. The bill already provides that Nature Scott could include any condition they consider appropriate in the license and that that should be complied with. Um, Amendment 88 is the one which touches on Article 1, Protocol 1, without going into the detail of that too greatly, um, Nature Scott is a public body already uh, obliged to comply with the terms of the ECHR, including the qualified right of A1, uh, Article 1, Protocol 1. Amendment 89, in Rachel Hamilton's name, the additional licence under certain circumstances. Provision, equally I can't support this. It creates new provision allowing a person to apply for a licence for the use of more than two dogs in certain circumstances without any of the safeguards that we have very deliberately and carefully built into um, the bill. The, the provision also refers to pest, speech, pest species, which is not a, a, a term presiding officer that I will readily, if at all, use. Amendment 90, um, also in Rachel Hamilton's name, similar to Amendment 89, provides that a person may apply for a licence under this new section in this case, to permit the use of more than two dogs, again, to deal with pest species. Um, the change, again, presiding officer of the chamber will note that's not a term that the government will readily use or accept. An amendment 91 in Rachel Hamilton's name, uh, setting out how Nature Scott must grant, refuse or respond to an applicant within 30 days. This is the, the point that I um, had an exchange with Beatrice Wishart on. Um, a turnaround of 30 days is already standard practice for Nature Scott, and in some cases they already do this far uh, quicker. Of course, the processing times of licences will vary depending on the type of licence, the quality of the application and the supporting documents uh, submitted. Um, as I said to Beatrice Wishart, I have confidence that Nature Scott can continue to turn licences around in that period and that they have sufficient um, provision to deal with the need to expedite cases where 
that may arise. And of course, that point addresses Amendment 92 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, which I also cannot support. Presiding officer, moving to Rachel Hamilton's final amendment in this group, 94. This would require the Scottish Government to make regulations for the licensing of more than two dogs for all of the uh, something like 10 plus circumstances set out in the amendment. I, I believe this is entirely unnecessary. Uh, most, if not all, of the circumstances listed in the amendment are either already covered by other areas of the bill or do not necessitate the use of more than two dogs. Um, for example, in relation to licences for the use of more than two dogs in rough, hilly terrain, I have been clear, clear all along that uh, one of the main reasons for introducing the licence ha has been about responding to Lord Bonamy's comments on terrain. We have discussed the matter of recovery of a wild mammal injured in a vehicle collision, as we have on ensuring foxes are humanely dispatched. Um, I believe the licensing scheme strikes a balance, but it is an exception to an exception and must be construed narrowly. And, presiding officer, that brings me to the final provision in this group, amendments 46, 49, 80 and 82 in the name of Colin Smith, which propose applications for a licence to use more than two dogs be subject to adherence to a set of standards based on ethical principles for humane wildlife management. As I stated in response to Ariane Burgess, uh, her amendment for a wildlife management plan, I am sympathetic to the intention here, but I can't support the amendments. Um, as discussed at stage two, Nature Scott have developed that shared approach to wildlife management. It is a valuable framework that has been developed in conjunction with a wide variety of stakeholders from conservation, animal welfare, land management, and includes groups like the RSPB, Scottish Lands and Estates, the National Farmers Union and the Cairngorms and Loch Lomond National Park. I think that the consensus demonstrated by the shared approach is not to be disregarded likely and I think it is time that we give that a chance to operate before considering alternative frameworks and for that reason I can't support that amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I call Ariane Burgess to wind up I would advise members that there will be uh, just around 5.30pm uh, uh, obviously not right in the middle of a vote, but just around that time, a comfort break for 10 minutes. I call Ariane Burgess to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 37. Thank you. I thank the Minister and members for their comments about the amendments in this group, including Colin Smith's support for all of my amendments. I'm aware that the Scottish Government and police are determined to put an end to fox hunting, but there is a small group of people equally determined to continue this cruel practice. Just last weekend, there was a news story about the RSPCA and police trying to clamp down on illegal fox hunting in England through raids which seized dogs and made arrests. Our legislation needs to be watertight in order to deter that kind of activity and enable successful law enforcement. And that's why for each section and each amendment, we should consider whether it could be used as a loophole for continued fox hunting. I understand what the Minister said about not being too prescriptive, but obtaining a licence to use more than two dogs to hunt wild mammals shouldn't be too easy. It's reasonable, I'm going to continue actually, it's reasonable that those who want to hunt with several dogs should have to have a very good specific reason for this. They should have, a, have to have a plan for exactly how they will use the dogs to achieve that, their stated purpose. And they should make that known to the licensing authority so that body can be sure they are not licensing activity which this bill is intended to ban. Sufficiently detailed applications, licenses, license conditions and reporting will be critical to ensure that this licensing system is transparent and license hunting is accountable. On the amendments about ethical wildlife management, these simply aim to ensure that licensed hunting is as ethical as possible. How can that not be supportable? If the government supports the principles of ethical wildlife management in theory, why not demonstrate that by voting for one of these options and ensuring that Nature Scott and the Species Licensing Review also take ethical principles into account? The Scottish Government could show leadership on this. On Nature Scott's shared approach, to, uh, shared approach co concordat, this keeps being compared to ethical principles, but it's not really comparable. The shared approach isn't about ethics. It's about working together, clear communication, adaption, ad adaptation, and so on. But it's not that relevant. It includes one short section on safeguarding welfare, 
but this is out of date and it doesn't recognise sentience. Thank you. Um, I, I press uh, Amendment 37. Thank you. Um, point of order, Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I've been extremely encouraged this afternoon at the amount of interventions that have been allowed by me on members, uh, and I'm grateful for that, and I always will allow members to intervene on me. During the course of this afternoon, Ariane Burgess has spoken quite a lot and has not taken one single intervention. I know whilst it is her choice, could the presiding officer, could you confirm that there is no time limit? Let's hear Mr Mountain, thank you. Mr Mountain, do please continue. Um, Mr Swinney, Mr Mountain is speaking. Please continue. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. I seek for you. I seek for you to give me guidance that no member has been given, has been given a cut-off time as far as their speeches are concerned, so they are in a position to accept point of orders during the afternoon. And whilst Mr Swinney, Swinney might not like that, I'm sure you'll give us a ruling, presiding officer. Um, thank you, Mr Mountain. If we, could, if we could please refrain from shouting across the chamber. Um, it is absolutely the case that it is wholly in the hands of an individual member as to whether or not they accept an intervention. With regards to timetabling, the Parliament has voted on a timetabling motion, um, but obviously, um, as ever, presiding officers in the chair will seek to accommodate members as far as possible. Now, we move on, and the question is that Amendment 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a, a division, and members should cast their votes now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. We'll ensure that's recorded. <laughs> Point of order, Shona Robison. Uh, my uh, app uh, did not uh, connect, and I would have voted no. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. Point of order, Jamie Hepburn. My vote has been recorded. Just seek to confirm, Mr Hepburn. Um, I can confirm that your vote has been recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 37 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 25, no 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 38 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Move, Presiding Officer. The question is that Amendment 38 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now.
I call Cook out Stuart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 38 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 39 in the name of Ariane Burgess already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Paul Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. Point of order, Nicola Sturge. Um, my screen didn't connect, so I would have voted no. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 39 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 2 in the name of Christine Graham, already debated with amendment 37. Christine Graham, to move or not to move? Uh, Presiding officer, having tested the exhaustion category of persons, I'm satisfied with the minister's response, so not moved. Thank you. I call amendment 40 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Can I just ask you to repeat them? No. Thank you. I'm sure that's recorded. The vote is closed. The result of amendment number 40 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. <clears throat> I call amendment 41 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 37. 
I remind members that if Amendment 41 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendments 42 or 43 due to preemption. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call Co-Cab Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you. I'm sure that's recorded. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 41 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 93, there were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 42 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 37. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 42 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There is a division. Members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 42 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 30, no 92. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 43 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 37. Rachel Hamilton, to move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is closed.
The result of the vote on amendment number 43 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 44 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 44 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. Call Cocap Stewart. Uh, no. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 44 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 45 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with Amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 46 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with Amendment 37. Colin Smith to move or not move? It moved. The question is that Amendment 46 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. I call Cocab Stewart. No. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. The vote is closed. He's online. I call Craig Hoy for a point of order. I call Craig Hoy for a point of order. Sorry, presiding officer, my uh, app seems to have frozen. I would have voted no. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 46 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 26, no 96. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 47 in the name of Ariane Burgess, already debated with amendment 37. Ariane Burgess to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 47 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now.
Call Cool Cap Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 47 in the name of Ariane Burgess is yes 26, no 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 48 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 37. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 48 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. Call Co Cab Stewart. No. Thank you. The vote is closed. I call Graham Day for a point of uh, order. Apologies, President Officer. Um, my app's not working. I would have voted no. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 48 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 29, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 3 in the name of Christine Graham, already debated with amendment 37. Christine Graham to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. I call amendment 4 in the name of Christine Graham, already debated with amendment 37. Christine Graham to move or not move? Presiding officer, I have listened carefully to the Minister and the plans to publish data on all Nature Scott licences and I note the GDPR issues. I will be pressing for progress and looking for a timeline because it's in everyone's interest, including landowners. The public are aware of the land to which the licence applies, the conditions, the effective period and so on. But in the context of Ms. other proposed licence registers by Nature Scott, I won't be moving. Not moved. Thank you, Ms Graham. Um, at this point, I intend to suspend proceedings for 10 minutes for a comfort break, and there will be a division bell to inform members when they require to return to the chamber. Thank you.